So we have been on this series. It is called In My Feelings. We have been talking about what does it mean to dominate your emotions, regulate your emotions, and as well be able to really, really be able to dominate the things that drive us to go in wrong ways. So one of the first things we always say is, we all have feelings, but the question is, do your feelings have you? We all have feelings, but I ask you today, do your feelings, do your emotions have you? And our main scripture that we've been going over is 3 John 2, 3 John 1 and 2. And this is what it says. John says, be loved. I pray. See, he's praying for you all. Who are you praying for? How many people, you got somebody you praying for in this, in this room real quick? Who praying for somebody in here? Yeah, I know y'all got them drunk uncles. Come on, Ray, you need to be praying. Uncle Bobby, pray for Uncle Bobby. Pray for Uncle George. That's my uncle, Uncle George. He cool dude, though. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. God, he's praying that you will be successful. Who wants to be successful in this building? Good to see you, boy. Who wants to be successful in this building? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, okay. You want to be successful, right? You want to be successful. This is how you become successful. This is what it talks about. I pray that you will prosper being successful in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers. God wants your soul to prosper first. What is your soul? What is your soul? Come on, yell it out. Somebody, get, what, what you got? Emotions, that's part of it, that's part of it. What else? What else is your soul? What is your soul? Okay, what you got? What you got? Go on, Sylvester, get him one time. He look, that brother looks smart. Feelings. Your feelings, okay, that's part of it. What else? What else? What is your soul? What is your soul? Let your soul g- glow, y'all. That's too old? Y'all don't know about that. Okay, cool. Y'all got to watch some old movies. They should know about that, though. Your soul is your mind. Somebody say mind. Your will and emotions. So what is your soul? Boy, that sounded crappy. We're going to have to do that again. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Get your mind right. Get your emotions right, and you can go really far in life. It's really good to have that under control. So today, we did a vote, and we took a vote to see what topic would you all want to talk about in this room. And the vote was, drum roll please. And the answer is stress for 10,000 points. So today, we are going to talk about how to deal with stress. We're going to talk about what is stress, How could you deal with stress? And how did Jesus deal with stress? Y'all know Jesus had to deal with stress too, right? Y'all ain't believe Jesus had to deal with stress. But Jesus handled it just a little differently than how some of us would have dealt. Stress isn't a bad thing. So let's define what stress is. What is stress? What is stress? Well, stress comes from the word distressed, right? Distress. So let's define distress real quick. Great pain, anxiety, sorrow, acute or physical mental suffering, affliction, or trouble. Has anybody felt like this before? There's a lot of things that can stress you out in life. But let's define what is stress. Y'all watch this quick video real quick. What is stress? It's a good question. Watch this. One little piece of paper can have a remarkable effect. Stress is stressful. But if you understand a bit about what it is, you'll be better able to deal with it. First though, take a few deep breaths. In fact, do that any time you feel stressed. It helps. Stress is a survival mechanism. When danger appears, it can get you out of trouble quickly. Your body crashes up the gears and throws all its resources into getting you moving. Your heart pumps furiously to increase blood pressure, glucose is sent to the muscles as a fuel injection, and you become totally focused on what psychologists call fight or flight. Thing is, this emergency state is only meant to last just long enough to get you out of danger. But here in the 21st century, we stress about different things. 
and for much, much longer. Your brain and body stay on red alert, and you'll be less able to think clearly, learn, or remember things. So quick question, what are some things that may stress you out? What are some things that stress you out in here? What's some things that, not stress, stress, stress you out, stress you out. Some things that stress you out. Go on, get the mic. Whoever. School. School. How many think school is stressful? Just say, <sighs> If school is stressful, let me hear you say, <sighs> All right, what's the next one? What we got over there, Sylvester? No? I guess when I'm playing a game and my brothers are trying to get my attention. Oh, when they're distracting you from playing Fortnite, man. If, <laughs> oh, you don't play Fortnite. I got you. I got you. What you got? Um, probably, I, I don't know if everybody worries about this, but I worry about getting my friend's presents done on time when it's their birthday. Oh, oh that's, that's sweet right there. That's sweet. What else we got? When I lose my keys. When you lose your keys. If, if you lose your keys and it makes you stressful, say, ah. oh. why are all of y'all losing y'all keys? <laughs> like, all right, get the neck joint. Or put it on your belt buckle. Some. All right, what you got? Um, I stress or not if, my, if I'm going to get a whooping from my mom or not. Ah, if you're going to get a whooping from your parents. If you, yeah, that, when they say go to the room and wait for you, that's, that's the time where it's like, what should I do? Okay, I'm going to stuff some stuff in my butt so it don't hurt as bad. I got caught doing that one time. What you got? If I'm in a group project and everybody yells at me for not doing anything. Ooh, man, in a group project and everybody is mad at you because you ain't do nothing. Well, I... I that may be just a little uh, irresponsible. <laughs> you can stop that. You can stop that. <laughs> but you are doing something. Ah, they just don't think. Okay, okay. Because I was about to say, like, you causing that one yourself there. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Parents telling you to do chores. Parents telling you to do chores. If that is stressful for you, I'll say, huh. Get your, get your own place. Yeah, get your own place. <laughs> Worry about paying your own bills and doing chores, all right? Thank you, Sylvester. What you got? Last one, last one. What stresses me out is making sure my will... Hey, my quiet, will, quiet, quiet, quiet. Last one, last one. What you got? What stresses me out is making sure my mental well-being is okay while making sure the people I love, mental well-being is okay, too. Yeah. Dang, dang. Awesome. She got real deep with that one. That was real good, though. That was real good. See, the things that stress me out are just a little different. I didn't know she was going to take it that deep. But y'all check out. These are some things that stress me out just a little bit. These are some things that get me like. <laughs> I'll be like. That's the worst right there. I hate seeing them. <laughs> Y'all ain't never even played this game. Who's played that game? This right here gets me. That right there be getting me, boy. I ain't gonna lie. Done. Dud, dud. But there are like a million different things that can stress us out. You can get stressed out from homework. You can get stressed out from your biology teacher. You can get stressed out because of band practice, football practice, basketball practice, beta club, dance team, children's church, or anything. You can be stressed out because I heard that a 
a lot of youth was like really rallying this past weekend over global warming. People can get stressed out over global warming. We can be stressed when we go to school because school shootings are happening all the time. We can get stressed because we just got so much on our plate and we can't function anymore. Whew, that felt good. <laughs> Stress is something that everybody deals with. But my thing is, if you don't deal with stress, stress will deal with you. Amen. Y'all can write that down. Yeah, that, that deserved a clap. I ain't going to lie. That was a good one. No, nah, no, nah, don't, no, nah, stop, stop, stop. I want no sympathy clap. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that stress us out. Today, we're going to talk about how to handle that stress. We're going to talk about how to handle that. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. I like this scripture right here. I like this scripture. Is it hot in here? Just me? Just a little bit? A little cold? But that dance team, boy, they sure did show out where... Okay, I can't dance. Philippians 4, 6 through through, hey, y'all make sure y'all come next week for the youth invasion, and they really going to show out. They really going to show out in the main sanctuary. All right, it says this. Philippians 4, 6 through 8 says, be anxious for, it says, be anxious for, be anxious for nothing. What does the word anxious mean? I had to look that up because I'm like, what does it mean to be anxious? What is anxiety? What is that? Anxious, worried, concerned, apprehensive, fearful, uneasy, perturbed, troubled, disquieted, disturbed, fretful, in a state of agitation, nervous, in a state of nerves, edgy, or distressed. This says, be distressful for nothing. So, the New Testament is written in Greek. The Old Testament is written in Hebrew. And when I really want to find out what a word means, I'll just like look it up in the Greek or look it up in the Hebrew. Since this is in the New Testament, this word nothing is a deep word. I mean, this is probably one of the deepest words I've ever studied in my life. Y'all listen to what nothing means. Absolutely nothing. Oh, Oh, okay. Well, let's keep moving on. It says, be stressful for... But why? Why shouldn't we be stressful for nothing? Then it goes further. That's what I like about the Bible. Because it's not going to tell you not to do something without telling you how to solve the problem. Be stressful for nothing. Be, don't be stressful if your dog ate your homework. Don't be stressful if your baby brother pooped in your bed. I don't know where that came from, Chaz. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, taking a nap and I like, don't be stressful because your barber gave you a bad haircut. And some of y'all barbers gave y'all some bad haircuts. Be stressful. <laughs> don't be stressful because you got pimples. Don't be stressful for nothing. It says, but in everything, say everything. everything. Say everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to who? It says, don't be stressed out about stuff. Talk to God about it. Don't be stressed out because he's sneezing and he didn't cover his nose and now you may get germs. That was perfect timing, bro. Don't get stressed out about that stuff. It says, make your requests known to God with thanksgiving. It says, thank God that you're able to get through certain situations that you're in. God, I know I got a whole bunch on my plate right now, but thank you that you're able to make my plate bigger so that things don't seem like it's jammed and crammed right now. I know, God, that I'm really good at track and I'm really smart and I'm on a beta team and oh, I'm on a multicultural team and all this stuff, and it just seems like so much. Talk to God. Because your nappy-headed, hey, what's up, girl? Your nappy-headed friends can't always help you out. God ain't got no nappy head. He made all. Because it's like, anyway, scratch that. And then it says this in verse 7. And the peace of God. Somebody say peace. Somebody say peace. 
And it says, when you make all these requests known to God and you're not stressing over everything, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Stress is the opposite of peace. Stress is the opposite of Stress is the opposite of peace, you all. But the amazing thing is, Jesus says that he is the prince of Only this side said it. This is the only saved side in here. I'm going to go. Down here. I'm going to go over here. Oh, it's so fast. <laughs> Stress is the opposite of peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. Y'all still ain't do a good job. All right. Peace, quietness. Rest. Set at one again. How many people in here, you need some peace in your life? Yes, yes. Get some Reese's PCs. <laughs> I thought it was, it was a stretch. PCs. Okay. Yeah, it was, I thought it was all right. Like, it was on the spot. It was on the spot. Like, I ain't had that plan. Let me use the next service. It's going to be better. <laughs> and then verse 8 says this, finally, brethren, this is how you get rid of, this is how you de-stress. Somebody say de-stress. No, no, not. See, some of y'all have been in Cobb County too long. De-stress. No, de-stress. Stress, cuz. Stress. I'm from the south side. <laughs> Square. This is how you de -scray. Finally, brethren. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Pretty much what the scripture is saying, stop meditating on all the problems you have and start meditating on everything good that's going on in your life. But Nehemiah, I ain't got a whole bunch of good going on. Uh, you live in America. You have shoes on your feet. You got clothes on your back. You got underwear. Well, okay, let's just rewind. <laughs> How many of you all, you slept on the bed last night? What? Y'all got beds? Wow. How many of you all, you had heat or air conditioning? Last night was a little chilly. Was anybody cold last night? Just me. I woke up like, ooh, like it was cold. How many, how many of you all woke up but you had covers to put on? How many of you all went to sleep and you had socks on your feet? Wait, who, who don't sleep with socks? Raise your hand. Whoa, it's a lot of people. Who sleep with socks on? Wow. Weirdo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do I sleep with socks? Nah, I don't sleep with socks. Nah. I, you don't want your feet all sweaty when you wake up in the morning. Like, how you going? Yeah, just like, <laughs> that's, ew. Okay. We found out something new today. Raise your hand if you wear socks at night. Okay, we're going to pray for you all. Altar call after work. Nah, nah. Yeah, put them on. Thank you. That's what covers are for. We're going to get all of y'all Snuggies. We're going to get y'all Snuggies. So your whole, oh, that is expensive. Linked up Snuggies. That actually may be a little lit. All right, anyway. We don't have to be anxious when we can freely talk to God. We don't have to be stressed out when we can freely talk to the creator of the universe. We don't have to be stressed out when God doesn't charge us to talk to him. I mean, you all pay your cell phone bill in here. Oh, we got a couple responsible ones in this room. Yes. Yes. All y'all other ones, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> You got to pay a cell phone bill to be able to talk. You don't have to pay no cell phone bill to be able to talk to God. Jesus already paid the bill. He paid it all so you can talk to God freely about anything that you're dealing with. 
You don't got to be stressed out even if your parents are stressed. How many of you are, your parents just be stressed? They come home just ready to whoop. Like they come home any stressed out. Yo, man, I just thought of this story, yo. This was crazy. This was crazy. So I got a friend. Chaz knows one of my good friends. His name is James, right? Oh, you remember the guy was... Because they... Anyway, his name is James Preston Mills III. And this man, let me tell you what this man did. He was at my house, and it was summertime, right? Summer, summer, summertime. Hey, uh, Okay, but it's fall right now. It's fall. I was... We was at my house. And he was like, what you got to eat, bruh? You know, you know that friend that always come in your house and want to eat everything because they ain't got nothing at their house. <laughs> you wanted them. He going to my cabinet, ah, cookies. Takes the cookies. Now, these cookies are my dad's favorite cookies. They're called Sandy's. Only the old people know about them. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Ah! <laughs> let it rain, Sandy's. <laughs> so he's like, oh, bro, let me get a couple. I'm like, oh, Jay, Jay, chill, bro. Like, don't eat too many of that. Ah, shut up. <laughs> he just like, so Sandy's only has two racks, right? They only have two rows. This man ate like one and a half rows of my dad's favorite cookies. So I'm like, bro, like, you tripping. Because <laughs> I already know how my dad is. He's, hey, they just cookies, man. That ain't no big deal. Put him back up there. My dad comes home, and I guess he was stressed. He must have had a long day. He'd be working in the sun, doing heat and the air conditioning work. And he must have been thinking about them cookies all day <laughs> long. He come into the house. First thing he do, <laughs> Pour him a glass of milk. <laughs> ah. Jay, it's time for you to go home. Jay's like, okay. Next thing you know, we all got whoopings. Oh. And I'm like, I didn't eat them, I promise. It's your friend and you let him. <laughs> like, I can control this. He was stressed out. <laughs> he had to be stressed that day. And he came home with the belt. And my sisters got it, and they did nothing wrong. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. But let's talk about how Jesus dealt with stress. Let's talk about how Jesus dealt with stress. I think stress can kind of be like a storm. Stress can be like a storm. How many of you all agree with that? Cue that one time for me. Like... How many, I've been in a really bad storm before. One time I was in a storm, this don't look like nothing, right? Nothing happening. I was in a plane and it was raining. Talk about stressed out, boy, I was freaking out. Stress can be like a storm because for one, it can come out of nowhere just like wind. Y'all write that down. It can come out of nowhere like wind. It just starts coming. You don't realize what's happening. It just starts taking over everything. It can bring you down just like rain. Stress can bring you down like rain. And it can overwhelm you like waves. That joint came in quick. That joint came in real quick. I would have been, I don't know. I would have been a little scared right there, right? Stress is like a storm. But there's signs to see when a storm is coming. There's signs to see when you're about to get stressed out. You got to pay attention to the signs. It's starting to get cloudy over there. Maybe I should grab my umbrella. Maybe I should get my rain boots on, my poncho. I ain't got no rain boots, by the way. Just <laughs> no, rain boots are cute for girls, not for me. Oh, some guys may. Chad's got rain boots. <laughs> he does. They actually do look kind of fun. So let's turn to Mark chapter 4, 36 through 41. Mark chapter 4, 36 through 41. Mark 4, Mark 4. When you get there, say amen. amen. Ain't none of y'all there yet. Ain't none of y'all lying in church. Oh, you got it on the paper. Okay, okay. 
Mark 4, 36 to 41. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great wind storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. And he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. Y'all say, Jesus was asleep. This wave, this storm that was happening on wasn't a normal storm. It was like, how many people been on a boat before and the waves were really big? I done been deep sea fishing a couple of times. That joint gets a little rocky, right? This was, they didn't have big boats back then. They had smaller boats. So the smaller the boat, the more it will rock. Jesus was in the boat sleeping. Not just sleeping, asleep on a pillow. This man brought him a pillow on the boat <laughs> and was chilling. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Pretty much they said, yo, you don't care that we about to die, bro? You sleeping and we about to die. That let you know it was a bad storm already, right? They felt like they was about to die. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace. Somebody say peace. peace. Somebody say peace. peace. What did Jesus say? Peace. Jesus said, peace, be still. And that's where everybody started doing this from. Ever since Jesus did that, everybody else has been doing it. Peace, my brother. Like, asked him. <laughs> Jesus made that up. I found it in the Bible. He's a trendsetter. I like it. Oh, okay. Okay. Jesus arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they fearfully, exceedingly said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Yo, first off, Jesus was dope. That's just first, like, that big storm was happening, and Jesus just got out and said, peace, and it stopped. <laughs> yeah, I, I see Jesus. Fro, maybe braids, maybe braids. With it, with it faded on the side. <laughs> faded on. Nah, he ain't had a fade. Oh, he had the locks. I, peace. Okay, anyway. BJ, BJ, shake the dreads one time. Hey. <laughs> peace be still. This is a great analogy. For one, this was a real life event. But for two, it lets me know that whatever situation that you are going in in life, you can talk to Jesus and he can say, peace, be still, stop, stress, stop, anxiety, stop, depression, stop, whatever it is, stop, and it must obey. If the wind and the waves and the sea stopped, what can he do in your life? Same exact thing. Some of us, we got stressful things going on in our life, and I'm here to tell you today, you don't have to be stressed when you can freely talk to who? You can freely talk to God about what you're dealing with. So, it's all about perspective. How are you viewing your situation that you are in? What is this? What is this? Paper? Look deeper. Look deeper. What is this? Huh? Words on the paper, no. Look deeper. Cells, look deeper. Huh? Atoms, what else? Look deeper. Thank you. This is a tree. Came from a tree. I ain't hear it. You gotta, spe you gotta speak up. You gotta speak up. It's all about how you viewing the situation. 
Some people can see something and say, oh, it's paper. The other person can say, nah, that actually came from a tree. One person can be in a situation where something happens to their family and they're like, yo, this is the worst thing that ever happened in life. And the other person can view it and say, yo, this is going to make you better. How are you viewing your situation? Walt, could you get that for me? Where Walt go? Could you get that for me? There's people just in this room right now that are dealing with certain situations. A lot of us are, but some of us are dealing with deeper situations than other. My man Josh right here, man, we wanted to do something for you, right? We got something else that we're going to get you, but a lot of people from the plug, we wanted to write you a letter. We wanted to write you a card because I'm sorry about what happened for you, bro. That's not easy to deal with. But I'm here to tell you today, Josh, it can make you stronger. It can make you better. It can make you wiser. It can make you more fruitful, okay? Don't look at all the bad. I know it's tough, bro, and it's okay to mourn and cry over that. That's tough, but I'm here to tell you today, it can make you better. Okay, do you mind me sharing what happened or no? I don't have to. Okay. So Josh's father actually passed away a couple weeks ago. And it wasn't an easy situation for him to deal with. So we just wanted to give you a card, man, something that you can remember. If you could just give it to Josh over there for me, man. Y'all, y'all clap it up for Josh. Y'all encourage Josh real quick. Somebody speak words of life into Josh real quick. Tell Josh that you love him, man. Don't, don't just let him go through it alone. We ain't got to go through life alone. We love you, Josh. Seriously, we really do. How are you looking at your situation is important. The first thing is this, don't make things bigger than what it really is. Sometimes we can make something so small, so big. It's just a test. Don't kill yourself. It's just a test. Now, is it an important test? Yes. But in the scheme of life, yo, don't make it bigger than what it really is. It's just one pimple. I know it's right in the middle of your forehead. It's just one pimple. I promise you, you ain't going to remember it after a month. I promise you, you ain't. I promise you, you ain't. I know you ain't. Don't make things bigger than what they really are, yo. One time I... Mm, nah, I got to skip that. I ain't got enough time. One time I got fired from a job. I said, forget it. I just said, forget the time. Nah, I'm just kidding. One time I got fired from a job. I was about to get married to this beautiful woman right here, and I got fired from my job. Chaz... When Jazz was in my life, he knew about the situation. <laughs> Chill, you about to mess up the story. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Real talk, I got fired. About to get married, about to move into a new spot. How many know that could be a little stressful? Fired. Like, real talk. And I had to pay for the wedding. The whole wedding. <laughs> I love you, babe. <laughs> Still hurt in my pocket to this day. All righty. <laughs> How many know that situation could have did one or two things? One, one thing it could have did, it could have made me freak out. I could have freaked out. Wedding's off. I can't get married. I ain't even got no job. You ain't got no job, Tommy. Y'all, oh, y'all know Martin. Okay. <laughs> I could have did that or I could have did what I did and Chaz be a witness don't lie either <laughs> be a witness I called Chaz Chaz said you okay I said yes bro everything is going to be great my boss was like Nehemiah I'm so sorry I know you about to get married I got fired not because I did a bad job but I got into a car accident and we drive used to ride vehicles so they had to let me go the boss said yo Nehemiah I'm so sorry this is happening to you you about to get married, you got a wedding, you about to move, I know all this stuff. I said, yo, Nick, calm down, bro. Everything's going to be okay. I believe in Jesus. I said that to Chaz as well, like, Chaz, everything's going to be straight, bro. No, Nehemiah, seriously, bro, how are you doing? For real, for real. Don't. I said, Chaz, no, real talk, I'm good. I'm thanking God because I know something better is going to come. I know something else is going to come my way. Chaz, am I telling the truth? Chaz was low-key like, nah, okay, bruh, chill with all that stuff. Tell me the truth. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm really good. I was expecting a huge miracle to come from that. 
I was expecting somebody to come to my door and just be like, hey, here's $30,000. You know, it didn't quite happen like that, but, <laughs> but God came through for me. We got married, still able to pay for everything. On the way back from our honeymoon, I get two calls. Still ain't had no job. Two calls on the way back from our honeymoon, two job opportunities. Crazy, right? I got to pick which one. You remember that? We was driving back from Florida. Oh, you don't? I remember it. Anyway, you don't have to be stressful. You don't have to see problems, see potential for growth. Don't see problems, see potential for you to grow. All right. Now, here's some practical steps, and then we're going to get ready to close. Here's some, here, I want you all to choose three things from this practical steps that I'm going to give you. Choose three of these to work on, right? One, this is how you can help manage your stress. One, watch what you eat. In all things, be in good health. That's what the scripture is. We just read it said, be healthy. Watch what you eat. Eat some vegetables. Eat some kale. Eat some pumpkin seeds. Eat some salad. Stop, stop eating junk food. That joint's going to mess you up. Real talk. All you eating is honey buns and Takis and hot Cheetos and sour cream. Sour, wait, sour cream and onion chips. <laughs> no, sour cream and onion chips. Cheddar. Ruffles. <laughs> okay. Breathe. Breathe. Take time to. Sometimes when I'm stressed, I, I low key just. And it really does help. Keep on breathing. Breathe. Look at the big picture of what's really going on. Look at the big picture. Other one, get off social media. Yes. Get off social media. Another thing, stop listening to so much music. You stress listening to a whole bunch of music, you're not even able to fully think about what's going on. Another thing, get out into nature. Go outside. Go walk around. Go look at, no, it's fall. The leaves are about to change color. Go observe some leaves. Go look at some grass. Stop smoking grass. All right, that was for somebody in here. I, I get a lot of nature in. No, that's not nature. <laughs> I stay with the nature. No, you, no. You stay with embalming fluid because all that stuff is poison nowadays anyway. That's that loud. No, 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 no. That's death. And it has a whole bunch of chemicals in it. And that's why it smells the way it does. And they got all type of feminine stuff to make you males. We'll talk about that another day. Yeah, estrogen inside the weed. Yes, embalming fluid in the weed. But eh, who, anyway, communicate about your problems. Find a friend and talk about your problems. Next one. Now, these are my top three. Three, communicate about your problems. Two, plan ahead. Sit down and plan what you have to do. Write everything out that you need to do. Then you'll be able to see, oh, it's really not as much as I really thought it was. But since it's all inside your head, it's jumbling you up and it's messing you up. Put it on paper. Prioritize what you need to do. Plan ahead. Put together action steps to figure out what you need to do. And then the most important one, focus on God. Focus on God. Focus on who? It says magnify the Lord. That means make him bigger than you're making your situations. Put a magnifying glass on God. Start, stop magnifying your problems. Matthew 6, 25, 33 says this. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, anytime it's in red, that's Jesus. It says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat what you will drink, nor about your body, what will you put on? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Some of y'all be stressed out because what you got to wear. Isn't life more than clothing? Isn't life more than what you got to eat, what you putting on? If you're stressed about what you always wear, and I'm telling you, you're dressing for the wrong person anyway. You're dressing for them, not for yourself. 
Anyway, look at the birds in the air, for they neither sow or reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. The birds don't plant grass and food for them to eat, but God feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to a stature? Pretty much. How many of you all, which of you, can you worry yourself into growing an inch? No. Not at all. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, neither toil or spin, and yet they say, Yet I say to you that even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Let's go down to 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles say, people who aren't believers, for your heavenly Father knows, knows that you need all these things. And this is my favorite part. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day and trouble. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Put God, put God, put God, it's almost like this. We got a lot of stuff going on in our life. We got homework. We got, we got phone bills, some of us. We got to make our beds. We got chores. We got FCA. We got, we got all these different clubs that we got to be in. Then we got to come to church. And then our friends is bugging out. And then that little boy that I like, he actually ugly. And then I got... <laughs> we got all these things that we be stressed out about, right? These small, minute things, right? Oh, man, what am I going to want? First off, one thing you should do, if you stress, put out your clothes the night before. Don't try to pick your clothes. You already waking up late. Now you're trying to figure out what you, you're going to school, wrinkled, looking bad, crust in your eyes. Fix yourself up the night before, right? You got all these things you got to worry about, but then it's the most important things. Now, it's hard to put God in here in your life and fit it if all you got all these problems is the main thing that's focused on. Then it's hard to really, school is important too, so we need to make sure we get our school work right. Then we got relationships. We got all, and I ain't talking about boyfriend and girlfriend, right? Throw that out right now. Get your life together first, right? Thank you, Chaz. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so how do you fit all of this stuff into your life because it's not fitting the way that you've been doing it? You have, to, you have to think about it differently and do life differently. God is the foundation. You need to put him first. Then you need to put whatever else. I'm just giving examples, but this, but this should be the first one. Then you need to put whatever, prioritize. What's next that you need to focus on? Schoolwork? Okay, let's focus on that. Make a list. What's after that? You got, relate, you got your mom, your dad, your brothers, sisters. You need friends, whatever it is, right? Put the priorities in first. After you put the priorities in order first, everything else can start to line up. When everything else starts to line up, you can fit everything in and you still have plenty of space. Oh, <laughs> whoop Rico on. Hey, all right. <laughs> but the thing is this, you all, you have to get your priorities together. You focused on what you're going to post on Instagram, and you ain't even talked to God yet. Okay, my bad. You worry about your Snapchat streak. I can't miss my streak. And you ain't even got on your Bible app. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You worried about what you want to wear to school and you ain't even do your homework. <laughs> Who cares? 
You're not focusing. You're not prioritizing what you need to prioritize. You're worried about everything. I need my edges right, but you're about to fail a test. <laughs> Come on, man. Get your priorities together. That is how you de-stress, cuh. De-stress, get your priorities together. Talk to God. Write out a list. And that's it. Let me have everybody heads bowed and eyes closed. Now what?